Hey everyone, John here. Um, we had a bit of a big development in this case. I actually shot most of this episode yesterday before what happened last night happened last night. So I'm gonna run the episode anyway, but at the end I'm tagging on this new segment uh, where we're gonna discuss what has happened with this case. So please stick around, here we go. Hey everyone, John Lorden here. We're going to do a mini scratch update on the Lucas Hernandez case. I was really hopeful that we would have some autopsy results to discuss here, um, basically because I want to see this case move forward in terms of some type of court action likely against his, uh, well, it's not really his stepmother, but the person that was taking care of him. Uh, do we have some of that information? Maybe just a little bit, but not as much as we were expecting. Basically, the autopsy is still ongoing from what I understand. According to the Nancy Grace podcast, there has actually been two conducted so far. We are going to get uh, a little tiny bit of information about that, but they haven't been formally released yet. Um, they're, they're waiting for several more weeks, which likely means that they're waiting for toxicology. So, uh, But there are several updates that I do want to touch base on, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do a short video video uh, updating everyone. So um, here at cbsnews.com, the first thing we see is Kansas agency won't release info about boy found dead beneath bridge. The Department for Child and Families denied a records request filed by the Wichita Eagle seeking information relating to five-year-old Lucas Hernandez. The department must legally provide upon request a summary of its previous contact with a child who dies of abuse or neglect. Sounds like a good policy. The summary can help show what the agency did when it received reports a child was being abused and whether changes should be made to better protect children in the future. And obviously that's why it's a good policy. But the agency said there's currently no finding that Lucas died of abuse. Now, my initial reaction to that when I first heard it was, well, but hold on a second. We know that his body, at least at a minimum, his body was abused. It was removed from wherever he passed away. It was hidden not very well under a bridge. I mean, from my perspective, that's a form of abuse. But for what they're looking for in terms of a legal definition, I understand that they don't have that currently in place. So um, what's it going to take to get that? I'm pretty sure the autopsy results are going to be a part of that. But let's continue with more at Kansas.com. Judith Hurd, Lucas's great grandmother, said Friday that she has questions about what was done to investigate past abuse concerns involving Lucas. Who went and checked? Or did it just get laid over on somebody's desk? Somebody needs to be accountable. I think that's important. Um, she's making a very clear and I, I have to agree with her. And I think that's part of the reason why some of that information should be released. I understand that they have their rules about it. Um, but in terms of, I mean, I, I'm kind of sensing there could be more litigation around this case if for some reason the proper actions weren't taken in terms of trying to protect Lucas. Uh, and we're going to get to many more reasons why as we continue this article. Because of the condition of the body, there is no guarantee an autopsy and toxicology examination will be able to determine how Lucas died. That is one of my biggest fears. I'm sure many of you out there are feeling that as well. If the cause is not clear from that examination, it could be more difficult to charge someone in his death and to get a jury to convict. Prosecutors are waiting on results of a toxicology examination. That testing could help detect substances that might help explain how Lucas died. Um, I would guess in particular, if there was some form of poisoning or something like that, they might be looking into that. Um, I don't know that that would, that could really go both ways depending on what type of chemicals it is because then all of a sudden there could be this story about, uh, you know, Lucas got into the cleaning cabinet or something along those lines. So um, I'm a little concerned because I've seen before in other cases where even though the toxicology is pending, the um, autopsy will, uh, some report from the autopsy will be released. And it's usually when there is some type of very obvious 
thing that has been done to the body that they can determine, okay, this is definitely the thing that killed this person. So the fact that we're having to wait on toxicology results is pushing me in the direction of, for some reason, the physical condi condition of his body uh, is not leading them to the answer in terms of why he died. I hope I'm incorrect about that. Um, or do I? I don't know. It's, it's really a tough thing here, guys. Um, there have been multiple previous reports in which Glass was suspected of abusing Lucas, court records show. The Eagle gained access through a Sedgwick County judge to a key court document filed by a prosecutor two days after Lucas was reported missing. Now, I believe this was part of uh, the case, the uh, negligence case that she was, uh, that she was acquitted on uh, for her one-year-old. But they did also collect some information about what was going on with Lucas through that. In March of 2017, someone saw him with temporary tattoos that were hiding bruises. He had bruises from head to toe and a bruise on his bottom that looked like the shape of a clothes iron. Uh, May 16th, 2017, someone suspected Lucas of being abused, bruising in the shape of a hand on his left arm, bruising on his left cheek and on his bottom. October 2017, while Lucas and Glass visited his father in New Mexico, he had two black eyes. According to the document, Lucas's bruises most often showed up after Glass and his father argued, and Glass may have been targeting Lucas due to her anger with the boy's father. What concerns me about that particular, uh, that particular instance is, on the latest podcast where her father is interviewed by Nancy Grace, uh, she asks the father pretty directly, did you have any idea that there could have been abuse going on with Lucas? And he is very clear that he did not think that there was any abuse like that going on. Kind of strange if they're going to visit him in New Mexico and the kid's showing up with two black eyes. I mean, I guess she could have given him some story about what happened. Uh, another thing that didn't come up on the Nancy Grace podcast, and I was... I don't. I really don't know why they stepped around this. Uh, are the charges that I mentioned in last week's episode that the father's facing for potentially harming uh, Emily Glass's six-year-old? So um, I don't know. I, I really don't know why they didn't question him about that on the show. In December, he had bruises on his arm and a large bruise on his forehead, and Lucas said that Glass became angry and threw a water bottle at his face. And less than a month before he was reported missing, his school nurse counted nine bruises and said it looked like he had been in a fight. Glass said he fell off monkey bars and Lucas returned to pre-kindergarten with a note from a pediatric nurse practitioner saying his injuries were consistent with a fall. Even if they were, just looking at the number of occurrences that we're talking about here, almost exactly a one-year period leading up to his disappearance. Um... It sure seems like a lot of time passed where someone could have intervened, and we just don't know. Uh, it, it's possible that there was some kind of caseworker that came by that started interviewing them. Um, I really haven't been able to find any inf information to back that, but uh, I don't know. This is, there's a lot of terrible, terrible history that we're seeing in this article. Uh, another article at Kansas.com, Lucas's dad says Glass was a good mom. A court document tells a different story. So this is just going to cover a couple of the points uh, noted in the podcast. But of course, I will have a link to an article that has the podcast embedded in it in the description box below. So you can check that out for yourself. Uh, the interview aired three days after the spokeswoman for Lucas's parents asked for privacy while they mourn. Cox said Monday afternoon that Hernandez agreed to the Grace interview before he asked for privacy and that he felt he had to go through with the Grace interview. In Monday's podcast, Hernandez said he never thought Glass would have known the whole time where Lucas's remains were hidden. Quote, it's not an easy thing to be able to process. Hernandez said he is a bit confused by her getting out of jail because she knew of the body's location and didn't divulge it for so long. Uh, he said his son had also been vomiting for a few weeks, went to the doctor and got a prescription. Uh, I wonder if that might be connected to them waiting for the toxicology results, if they're looking for some potential angle that he was poisoned. Um, so in the links below, the kwch.com one, that's the one that has the podcast actually embedded in it. Uh, Nancy Grace revealed autopsy res results show Lucas may have been dead for nearly a week 
before he was reported missing. Uh, if I remember right, she said either February 10th or 11th. At that time, Jonathan was working out of town in New Mexico. Uh, on top of that, they seem to have some information that he potentially could have died in a bathroom. I don't know how they would determine that necessarily. Um, I'm once again wondering if we're looking at some weird type of cleaner poisoning or something. I, I just, I hate thinking about it that way, but I just, I don't know how they're making a determination that he died in a bathroom. I can't imagine what would transfer to him that would clue them into that. Uh, Jonathan said while she was in jail, Glass called him a couple times to apologize for what happened. He said she told him she panicked. She said that she had panicked. I'm not sure if it's because she was smoking meth, which I had no knowledge of. I asked her why she didn't call 911. Why, if that's what happened, and he's talking about if she literally woke up and Lucas was dead, uh, why did she not just call 911? And I think that's an excellent, excellent question. Eyewitness News has reached out to the Wichita Police Department and the Sedgwick County District Attorney's Office to inquire about any autopsy results. And I did find it kind of weird. Um, Nancy Grace, of course, didn't cite a source on any of that, so it seems like it's a leak. Um, but the Wichita Police Department sent an, uh, a comment back. The investigation into the death of Lucas Hernandez is ongoing. The WPD is committed to investigating this case to the fullest and bringing anyone responsible to justice. We have nothing further at this time. We are all hoping and praying for justice in this case for sure. Sedgwick County District Attorney's Office uh, sent a comment back as well. The DA's office has not received any autopsy results. We can't speak to any allegations made on the GRACE program. So maybe we should take that information with just a little grain of salt. Um, but Nancy sure seemed kind of confident about it. Of course, when, when doesn't she seem confident? Uh, I don't know, guys. So that is where Lucas's case is at this point. Um, like I said at the start of this video, I was really hoping that we would hear the results and know that, you know, hey, next steps are definitely coming. They've identified what happened to him. He clearly couldn't have done that to himself. Let's get this ball rolling and let's let's make sure justice arrives in this case. Unfortunately, we can't quite say that. Um, but after listening, listening to his father speak on this program uh, and the types of communication that his father was having uh, with Emily Glass, it's, um, it's pretty clear to me that she is blaming herself for some aspect of this. Uh, is it going to be enough to stand up in court considering that she basically got through court unscathed um, just a, a, a few months ago. I don't know. I don't know, guys. This is really, really a tough one. Uh, but I will stay up to date on it. And of course, with any major developments, I will keep all of you updated. Thank you so much for joining me on this mini scratch. Uh, I'm also releasing a full brain scratch today. So be sure to check that out. Uh, with how heavy everything's been lately, we're going to make it a fringe brain brain scratch episode. So a little bit lighter than the usual fare has been uh, on this channel for the past few weeks. Just thought we could use a little, little breathing room from some of these heavy topics. So I hope you'll join me there. Take care, everyone. I'll see you back here on the Lord and Arts channel. Hey, everyone. So I woke up this morning, released the videos, started going through my Twitter feed and watching responses. And that's when I saw the news that Emily Glass uh, is no longer alive. So uh, let's go ahead and jump to a story here at Kansas.com. Uh, police investigating shooting death at home of Emily Glass. Uh, you can see this was posted just not even half an hour ago. Um, Wichita police are investigating a shooting in the home belonging to the father of Lucas Hernandez and his live-in girlfriend, Emily Glass. Lieutenant Rick Moshiki said Jonathan Hernandez got to the home in the 600 block of South Edgemore at around 1.30 a.m. and found a woman dead of a gunshot wound. Uh, police did not identify the woman or give an age. Uh, we know from other sources now that it is indeed Emily. Uh, Mojiki said Hernandez called 911 and has been absolutely cooperative in their investigation. And I'm glad they're talking about that because, um, you know, I've Obviously, in last week's video and this week's video, I talked about the fact that Jonathan seems to possibly have some anger issues as well. We know that he has a case uh, pending currently. Um, so, of course, the thought did occur to me that, you know, do we have 
something else that's going on here. It doesn't appear so um, from the outset. And as a matter of fact, the family has already released a statement. Uh, the family of Lucas Hernandez releases a statement in response to the apparent suicide of Emily Glass. Today, Emily Glass chose to end her own life. We are deeply shocked and saddened by this turn of events. Another mother and father have lost a child. Children have lost their mother and a family will have to grieve someone they loved. We know from experience how heartbreaking and tragic this will be for them. This is not the ending we would have chosen for Emily. She was the only person on this earth who could tell us what the last moments of our child's life were like. We wanted answers and we still want justice. Our hope is that the truth will still come out, that there will be answers to the many questions we have. Please keep Emily's family in your thoughts and prayers along with ours. None of us wanted or expected all this loss and devastation that has come to pass. Give both of our families time to process this unexpected death. Sincerely, Jamie Taylor Orr and Jonathan Hernandez. Um, I think they've, they've said it perfectly. Um, this is not the ending I think that any of us would have chosen for Emily. Despite the fact that it seemed like some very terrible things were happening in that house, um, despite the fact that it seemed like she did a very terrible act after all that by trying to hide what was happening in that house, um, she was at least coming around enough to start to uh, face the truth of that. She did lead the private investigator to where Lucas was. Uh, I'm not saying that you could redeem yourself for the actions that she had taken against a, a young defenseless boy like that, um, or at least not completely redeem yourself. But I do think that there were sm small steps that she was making in terms of trying to face what she had done. Um, and unfortunately, I feel like this is a situation where two wrongs don't necessarily make a right. And I know some of you out there might feel like, well, this is exactly what she deserved. And, you know, this is justice in some form. I don't know that it really is because uh, like we're seeing from the family, this doesn't answer the questions that they're looking for. This isn't the type of justice that they were looking for. Um, quite honestly, that hole that is in them from this whole event now isn't going to get filled in the way that we were all hoping for with truth uh, and someone paying an appropriate penalty for what they have done. Um, so yeah, it's really tough, guys. I'm looking at this and I just, I, this statement just keeps ringing through my head. Two wrongs do not make this situation right. Um, and quite honestly, I'm also wondering if she should have just been kept in custody. Uh, you know, we we have information that she was probably using uh, marijuana. We have information that she was probably using meth. Uh, we have a history of ongoing abuse here. I mean, I think someone should have asked the question, uh, is she in her right mind? And are we even safe turning her loose in these conditions? Um, and it seems like no one did. So... Unfortunately, this is where we're at with this case. Uh, I will keep you guys updated if there are any further developments. Um, I don't know, but uh, let's let's go ahead and talk about this in the comments. I ask that we be very, very respectful. I, I can totally see that people are going to have two very different opinions of the outcome of this situation. So let's just go into the conversation recognizing that. Let's give each other room for that. Um, and of course, people are going to have charged emotions around this. I think you you wouldn't be a human being if, if you didn't. Uh, this case was already charged with so much emotion because we're talking about what has happened to a five-year-old boy. And now we have someone that some people are going to say is, you know, avoiding, uh, you know, taking the, the easy way out probably of, of this situation. Um, I don't know, guys. It's it's really just not where I expected this morning to go. Definitely not where I expected this case to, to go. I would have much preferred that uh, there was a proper course of justice that came up here, but that's just where I'm at with it. So 
thank you all and sorry about the the start stop i released the video and then i pulled it down and now i'm you know re-releasing it but i really thought that this information was key and uh, it's weird because even in the message when i posted the video this morning i said is justice coming soon enough and then i saw this and i think i'm still really left with that question is this really the justice that we were all seeking in this um i don't know Thanks, everyone. I'll see you back here on the channel in the next video.